computer is a creative tool in children's learning, no longer linked only to computer studies. It ranges across every part of their education, bringing richness to every subject in the national curriculum. What is most exciting about using computers in learning is the way they free the imagination. We are seeing computer systems in schools that are considerably superior to the average computer system used in industry. And once we start putting that sort of level of technology into the classroom, then we start to see radical change. And the change really is to a situation where the computer is seen by teachers, by pupils, as a tool to be used wherever appropriate to meet particular curriculum needs. It is something which makes learning easier, it makes learning possible in ways that it wasn't possible before, or it enhances the development of the pupil's learning. Computers add a new dimension to scientific experiments for pupils of all ages and abilities. Now it opens up science to a lot more pupils because graphs especially is something that tends to block um, enjoyment of science for many pupils and now suddenly, although they still have to know how to draw a graph, at least they can see it on the screen first of all, even if they then go away and perhaps plot their own graph afterwards. All children, whatever their ability, are able to use computers and gain success. That I would put high on my reasons for having computers in school. I think it gives them a great deal of satisfaction to be able to produce a really beautiful picture without the difficulties of handling paint and crayons that uh, they, they usually use. It's a different, um, a different way of doing it and it looks most professional. It also is a tool that we can use right across the curriculum to link in with all their project work, with maths, with English, with art and design, with technology. And so it's a very versatile tool. The stamps started when they were beginning to use the Archimedes and discovered that they could make a large picture which they could um, reduce and then double up on. And of course the application was immediately um, obvious to the children that they could use them for stamps and from then on they used them in connection with various projects. I think it helps to make the project very real. They get a finished product that is excellent and although they very often do their own drawing and writing in connection with their topic it gives a different dimension to the work that they're doing. Here are five piece stamps. Yeah. These are nice. When you've done all the research, you know, it's Dillinger, isn't it? The scope using the word processor is much, much wider than just sitting down with a pen and uh, paper. I, they can put the text in and they can move the text around to shapes that they want. They can change the size, they can change the type of letters, it can be in italics or, or whatever, and they can go on from there. And that's not really something that they can do very easily with a pen and paper. Yes, it can be done, but it's not as easy. It's not, it is not accessible to so many as the computer makes it. A powerful new generation of computer software is creating a revolution in the classroom, opening up new possibilities for teachers and pupils alike. Genesis is one of the key pieces of software that uh, we think is important for pupils to have access to. It is important because it is a piece of software that links together the products from all the other software they use, whether they produce speech, whether they produce music, whether they produce graphic pictures, whether they produce line drawings or whether they produce text. All of those items can be brought together in Genesis The point of Genesis is that it allows the children to deal with cross-curricular work in that we can access um, many different fields. We can get into the historical, the geographical, the economic, etc. And we can pull it all together under one heading. For example, we're using um, Of Mice and Men, John Steinbeck, with our Genesis project. And from that we isolated certain aspects that we wanted um, 
the children to look up, i.e. we're dealing with a period of the 1930s, so they went off to the history department and found out about the Depression, and they found out about the Ku Klux Klan, and they found out um, about the state of the economy of uh, America at that time. And they brought that material back and put it, onto, put it into Genesis. And so they're using research skills, investigative skills, um, and then using the word processing facility to put it onto, onto disk. Change the background. Put black like that. And do the same. So it's red. Yeah. How are you getting on? All right, thank you. Are you finished? Yeah. For children to have computers at home is an excellent idea. Um, partly because they learn keyboarding skills, which are then able to be used in schools. But it's also part of their enjoyment, part of their leisure, and anything really that is enjoyable is halfway to becoming something that's very easy to learn and to, pro to progress with. We thought for many years that the children were perhaps not getting as much computer experience at school as we would have liked, mainly due to lack of funds, and we wanted them to be able to enlarge on all their various interests at home and also to join in it with them. We need them to have the feeling that they would they enjoy to use it. They want to use it. They don't want to go um, away feeling that they're frightened of it. Um, because a lot of times, I mean, even in industry today, you see operators, machinists, anybody, and you tell them, oh, we're bringing this new machine in, it's computer controlled, and a look of horror and blankness goes across their faces. And this is what I don't want with my children. I want them to feel that a computer is like almost like using a knife and fork. Parents who are wanting to buy a computer for children at home really need to look for something that has good software and they need perhaps if they're thinking with secondary school students to look for a computer which is compatible with the ones they would be using in school. And quite a lot of our students will start work in school I want to take the disc home and continue at home. And obviously, if you've got something incompatible, then this is a waste of time. I think it's very important that pupils should have access to a computer at home, just as the pencil case, or indeed the calculator, are the tools of the 80s. So I believe the computer will be one of the essential educational tools of the 90s. And clearly, children who have computers at home have an advantage. ACORN has worked closely with a panel of head teachers, local authority inspectors and parents to develop the learning curve. This is a complete package for family use, including the BBC A3000 computer. With a powerful word processor, art, design, music software and a support video and booklet, it all adds up to a comprehensive learning centre. It will even run PC business programs, linking work, school and the home. You will be giving your family a gift for life. A familiarity with what a computer can offer will give a head start now, both in school and in the wider world. Move it down then. Save it.
Hello, so you've got a new learning curve too. In this short video, I'll show you how to set it up and I'll give you a taste of the vast range of applications that all the family can use. So, what have we got? Well, first of all, there's the computer and keyboard. There's this gadget, which is called a mouse. And of course, the monitor. And that's all the hardware. Then there's the welcome guide, which explains all about running your BBC A3000. And finally, there's the software itself, the programs. But first of all, let's get the machinery up and running. It's impossible to plug any item into the wrong socket because each plug is different from the rest. And so, of course, they can only be plugged into the right hole. First of all, take the computer and plug in the mouse. That goes in underneath the computer, like so. Fine, that's the mouse, and next comes the monitor. Now, this one is a color monitor. That plugs in around the back here in this socket marked analog RGB. Plug it in, and you will need a small screwdriver here just to tighten these screws to ensure a really good fit. Right, that's firm. Now, if you've got a monitor stand like this one, it simply slides onto the back of the computer and you'll find that that's plenty strong enough to support your monitor. And there, that's all there is to it. Simply plug in and switch on. Now, the first thing you'll see is the BBC A3000 desktop. If you don't see this, then check that all your leads are properly connected. So let's have a look at this desktop screen. This is the work area with a pointer which is controlled by the mouse. Now, as I move the mouse, you'll see the pointer moves with it. And at the bottom of the screen here is this light grey bar. The symbols on the bar are called icons, and they represent different functions which allow you to control the computer. Well, that's the computer, the hardware. But it's the software, the programs, which turn it into a word processor, a sophisticated art and graphics tool, or even a music synthesizer. Programs are computer instructions, and they come on these things, floppy disks. Actually, they're not floppy at all, and somebody's got a funny idea of what a disk looks like. However, the name goes back into the mists of computer history, and we're stuck with it. The way your computer works is that it takes instructions off these magnetic disks in much the same way that music is replayed from a cassette. The computer then stores the information in its temporary memory. It's these instructions which turn the computer into a word processor, a draw and paint device, or a musical instrument. When you've written your letter or created your drawing or composed your symphony, you'll want to save it. You give it a name and store it on another floppy disk. It's then preserved for whenever you next need it, whether it's tomorrow or next year. Always remember to save your work onto disk. This is vital because the computer's temporary memory only lasts as long as the computer is switched on. If you haven't saved it and you switch off the computer, well, bang goes all your hard work. The disks that come with the learning curve already contain programs. These are master disks and you must look after them. If you damage them or accidentally erase part of a program, well, you just have to buy some more. This tab can be moved up and down. Now, in this position, the disk is right protected. That's computer jargon, meaning that you can't save files onto it. You can only read what's already there. That way, you won't accidentally erase the valuable software. So, always leave the right protect tab in the safe position like that on your master disks. OK, now we're ready to load a program. First, you'll need to find the applications disk number one, like this, and slot it into the disk drive, which is here on the right of the computer. Now, be careful that the disk is the right way up. Label goes on top. In it goes. Now, you tell the computer what to do by using the mouse. The mouse moves that pointer to the action that you require. Now, this may seem a little bit tricky at first, but believe me, you soon get the hang of it. The buttons on the mouse carry out different functions. The one on the left selects an item. The one in the middle here displays menus, lists of options. Now remember, middle for menus. Now to tell the computer to read that floppy disk, click the select button with the mouse pointer on the disk drive icon down there. Click it once, a slight pause, 
And there, the screen displays the disk's contents, the directory. Lots of applications, each one represented by an icon. Now, one of the most useful is this one here, Help. To load it, simply move the mouse pointer up to that icon and double-click the Select button. Now, a double-click is two clicks in rapid succession, like this. If you look at the icon bar, you'll see that a replica Help icon has appeared. There it is. Now that help is loaded, I can find out about anything on the screen that I don't understand simply by pointing to it. For example, what's this down here? Move the pointer there, and it tells me this is floppy disk drive zero icon, and there's some more information about it. When you've finished with help, simply click on the small cross up here, and away it goes. Well, now let's try something else. Draw here is what's called a graphics application. As before, I double-click to load it. And to tell me it's loaded, there's a replica icon on the icon bar. One click on that, and it opens a window, giving you a clean page to draw on. Now, down the left are nine shapes. There's circles, lines, rectangles, and so on. All part of the graphics toolbox. OK, now it's your turn. Stop the video here and have a go for yourself. Actually, these graphics you'll find on one of the disks. That's just to get you started. If you make a mistake, though, don't worry. You can always close the window you're working on, like that, and open up a clean one, like so. I'll see you soon, but don't get too engrossed in the computer, will you? There's still a lot more to show you. Oh, getting too clever, aren't you? <laughs> oh, there you are. I thought you'd be longer than you said. It's difficult to stop once you've started, isn't it? Well, while you've been away, Thomas has been rummaging through the applications disks, and he's found this, which is called Lander. And it's a great deal more difficult than it looks. OK, so it's a game, and where's the education in that, you might say? Well, it is teaching two things. Firstly, it's developing hand-eye coordination. And secondly, it's improving his mouse handling skills. Maestro develops other skills, giving you the ability to create music very quickly. And as Abby has found, you can get very passable tunes out of Maestro straight away. And that's very encouraging for beginners. It's not like scratching away at a violin for weeks with slow, painful progress. Of course, the resources of the Learning Curve package provide much more than this. There's a very powerful word processor, First Word Plus. You'll find you'll be using this for letter writing, project, reports, anything, in fact, which involves text. First Word Plus has all the features required to write documents, alter them, check the spelling, change the layout, even add illustrations. No longer is there a need for ugly crossings out when a better phrase or word comes to mind. And your BBC A3000 has another exceptionally useful feature. If you load in the PC emulator disks, now the computer has been transformed into a PC-compatible machine, and you'll be able to run Lotus 123 and other business software in just the same way as you do at work. Now, that's ideal for completing projects over the weekend or in the evening, and the disk that you take back to work will run on your office PC. The program I've left until last is this one, Genesis, and it's like no other. It allows you to combine text, graphics, animation, and music into an integrated form with paths linking facts and concepts. You create the links and you assemble the model. It's a bit difficult to describe, but here's an example to show you how it works. We can start with something like, say, a map of Europe, drawn with a graphics package like Draw. Well, I can find out a bit more about any of these countries just by clicking on the one we want. So, uh, Thomas, if you click there, we'll find out about France. There's yeah, some information, and even, you notice, a bit of animation. And there's sound, too. Let's hear the national anthem. And, of course, we can find out a bit more about Paris. There 
there we are. And by clicking on the flag, let's see what happens. Ah, now we're off into a whole new area, Flags of Europe. But don't make the mistake of thinking that this is just a geography program. It's versatile enough to use for all kinds of purposes. A database, an address book, famous composers, an interactive story to involve the youngsters. Well, that really has been a lightning tour of your BBC A3000. This computer is one of the most sophisticated available. The learning curve's range of advanced software has been carefully selected to meet the educational needs of today's children, now and in the future. It's been developed in close collaboration with the country's leading educationalists to provide a stimulating environment to stretch the minds and the creative thoughts of all who use it. Whether it's a four-year-old starting to express his thoughts and ideas, an eight-year-old polishing her poetry, a 12-year-old pulling together the linked elements of a project. A 15-year-old experimenting with music. An 18-year-old studying for A-levels or college. Or parents running business software at home. The learning curve from Acorn is the computer for the whole family. A computer solution for today and the future.